everybody and welcome to live blessed tv where we take great pride in mixing our faith in god with our therapeutic tools to make sure that you are healed whole and made anew in every area that you hurt today we are discussing the medical model where doctors know best that doctor that we are referring to is dr michael jones who is here with us thank you thank so you much yes absolutely thank you so much for coming this has been a long dream dr michael jones actually worked with eclectic counseling services clients he has um provided them with health services as well as follow-up psychiatric care so he's been very awesome for us to work with so i have long wanted to get him on the tv show so i know you guys can just feel the excitement the name of your facility is Jones Wellness and Cardiovascular Center. How long have you had that center and facility? It's been about eight years now. Eight years now. Wow. Well, you know I'm a counselor. So eight years. How has that facility grown you or how have you evolved as a, as a, as a doctor or even as a person through the eight years of having Jones, Jones Wellness and Cardiovascular Medical Center? Sure. Well, let's first talk about the patients. Uh, when I started Jones Wellness and Cardiovascular, we had no patients. I was just moving back to New Orleans. Uh, we were in one location at that time. We then expanded to three locations. Being able to expand to three locations with three different hospitals that I was serving, everything got to be way, way too much. So I had to bring in two nurse practitioners. So at one point I was managing new two nurse practitioners. Over time I decided to scale back again. So now at my office at 3405 St. Claude Avenue, it's just me and one nurse practitioner and we still have a very large clientele. My company's called Jones Wellness and Cardiovascular Jones being my name, wellness because Although I'm a cardiologist, I don't just want to take care of you when your heart is damaged. My idea is that I help you, and we use that old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So our intention is to keep people well, not allow them to get sick. But we know that you're going to get sick. So hopefully we keep you well, but when you do get sick, we're there for you also. Um, as regards to me growing as a person, <clears throat> I came back to New Orleans with three children, and I was very much the absentee father. I was completely into my job. I had agreed with my wife. I said, look, we'll start our own practice. I'll work like a slave for five years. Thereafter, we'll scale back and we'll live our lives to some degree. And that's actually what's happened. And it's been really good for my children because there was a time where I could not have been here with you right now because I would still be at the hospital. Exactly. That is, let me tell you, Dr. Jones is on it. Okay, the Joneses are at the table. <laughs> he is all in my question light up because we're definitely, I'm so glad to get there. But before we do, I want to give you all some contact information. He is a wonderful person. He is a medical doctor that has a heart for the people. He has, he's in pulse. That means he's in sync with the people. So you don't want a doctor that's going to rush you in and rush you out. You want someone to take time out for you. Just like he's taking time out for us today. This is a medical doctor that's sitting at this table to provide you with the answers that you need concerning your health issues. So just like he's taking time out with us today, he's going to take time out for you when you come into that medical facility. The address to that facility, once again, is? 3405 St. Claude Avenue. It's at the corner of Desire and St. Claude. Absolutely, so you've heard it. So get your pens and paper ready. 3405 St. Claude Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana. And the office contact number is? The office contact is 504-662-3763, and that's the same as the fax line. Got it. And just give it to him one more time, sure. just in case. 504-662-3763. Absolutely. The office hours there is from 9 a.m. to about? 5. So we're open from 9 to 5 all days, but we, uh, excuse me, Monday through Friday. I don't try to work on Saturday and Sunday. Have to take care of my kids. Uh, and we're closed for lunchtime. So from 12 to 1, we're closed. But 
nine to five otherwise. That's right, and walk-ins are recommended. Absolutely, we take all major insurances, we take all Medicaid plans. There are a few that exclude us from time to time for various reasons, but for the most part, we take all insurance plans and for patients who don't have the insurance plan that we take or who does, don't have insurance at all, we do have a discounted plan. My goodness, so that means that when you walk into Jones Wellness and Cardiovascular Medical Center, you're going to receive the treatment that you need because he accepts all insurance and even whatever you don't have or your insurance is lacking, he's gonna discount that rate to make it affordable to you. The website that they can visit to sure. learn more. The same as the company name, joneswellnessandcardiovascular.com and it's spelled out. And it is spelled out. So that's it, joneswellnessandcardiovascular.com. Make sure that you visit him 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 3405 St. Claude Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana. Now he's here doing his part, which is gonna tell us about health, but if you have to schedule that appointment, you make sure you get up and do your part, okay? So we expect you to do just that. Um, let's talk about what general services that you all provide. Sure. Well, we provide the basic care of internal medicine <clears throat> and cardiology. So um, we can take something as simple as coughs, coughs and colds, we take care of that. We can take care of something as, sim as uh, serious as an actual heart attack. Um, so we do all of those things. Um, the care that we give, we try to get everything in-house. So let's say that a person came in for a cardiac issue and we think that there's something serious there. We can do EKGs, echocardiograms, spirometry test which checks for how well you're breathing or not breathing. We can do stress tests all in my office. My goodness. So that means that instead of you all going to the emergency room where you have to wait to be seen, you can receive those same services there for half of the time, if not less yes, than sir, that. Sir, sir. Absolutely. Um, also, um, how long have you operated as a medical physician? Okay, so I graduated from medical school in 2000. Uh, excuse me, I finished my last training in the year 2000. So we're talking about 18 years of medical practice now. My goodness. And so most people have not accomplished what you have in this short period of time. Well, I'm, I'm, not as, I'm, I'm 50. I'm almost 50. I'm 49 as of August 17th, so just one year away from 50. So I'm not a spring chicken. That, that is amazing, you all, because we're also covering businesses as well. So those people who you may not be a medical doctor, but maybe you know how to cut hair, he's going to break it down and also give you some management tools so that you can use the gift that you have or the education that you have to launch out there and become a business owner. The reason why I said that is because most people that get into the medical field, you know, you might stay at a hospital for 10 years. So, you know, and then let alone uh, an 18 year time period, you yourself has owned three different <laughs> locations at, uh, and then have overseen nurse practitioners who are well able to operate their own clinic yes. without even being under you know, a doctor's care. So that nurse practitioner means that person is pretty much a boss, okay? Yes, absolutely. So how did that just grow for you, just overnight? How was that process? So first off, I never anticipated that I would be anyone's employee since I was a child. So um, my father and my mother both worked for companies. Uh, my daddy was a, how would they say it, um, they would say he was a union man. He worked for one factory, then he worked for another factory, so forth and so on. Um, my mother worked bookkeeping, she worked for a couple of different companies, she worked for a um, school, but I never thought that I should work for someone. I always anticipated that I would be able to control my own circumstances, that I would be able to employ people as I chose and saw fit. And I had enough um, courage, and also I would say, um, I believed in myself enough to say that I can do this, okay? I can do this. So when I came out, I almost immediately went into owning my own practices. I worked for one and a half years with someone else, but along that way, I had already started things that I wanted to do on my own, and then from there, I went off into my own practices. Um, frequently now, people who go into the medical field, they believe that they're to be someone's employee. Um, and that's not the way traditionally medicine has been. 
Um, traditionally, doctors came from the circumstance where they had means. Nowadays, it's not quite the same, but many, many years ago, you had to have, your family had to have money in order for you to go to medical school and in order for you to go to training because you were earning no money during that time frame. Okay, so, so you're talking about four to eight years where you could not earn any money because of your medical training. But things changed over time. The government became involved and now your education is subsidized. Your training, you're paid during your training by the government. So, so many people now are able to become doctors. But back in the day, those individuals who finished up medical school, they were already set upon the notion that they were going to be entrepreneurs. And, wow. and I think that we should be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that anyone really pays you what you're worth. Mm -hmm. okay, that's just the way it is. People don't pay you money unless they're making money off you. So mm -hmm. they're not really paying you your full value. So mm -hmm. I chose to go off on my own. And it's been actually the operation of a medical practice is pretty simple and straightforward. It's not that complicated. I believe the operation of most businesses are really not that complicated. But now there is, unfortunately, government regulations that have hampered things. And there has been a um, attempt, and a successful attempt, to make doctors look like bad guys. Mm -hmm. So patients don't trust doctors as much. So instead, the patient is more likely to go to Ashner oh. rather than go to Dr. Brown. Got it. So that's why a lot of people don't choose to go off on their own because they see the security of being attached to a big company. But I have never liked that. I, I, I never will. Absolutely. So first, I appreciate the history that you have given us because I do remember um, just looking back and thinking back. Most doctors, they had their tools and they went to the client or the, the person's yes. house. Yes. They treated them. They set their own appointments, they set their own schedules. Yes. And so that's what businesses allow you to do, to Absolutely. be flexible. You guys, Dr. Jones is, I mean, I don't know if you guys are picking it up, but he is spoon feeding this thing. And you broke it down to such a place to be able to say that even when you were married with your wife, you were able to say, look, at five, for five years, exactly. I'm going to work hard. And then once I do that to get it established, then I'll be able to be more of a family involved person. So many of you all that might feel like, you know what, I'm missing moments out of my child's life. You might want to consider becoming a business owner so that you can control your schedule, so that you can show up and do different events without having to take time off or work off to be able to do that. And so the government actually stepped in and began to pay medical students so well, not paying medical students, but paying the training, that is, your internship, your residency, and what's called your fellowship. Medical school, you're paying for that, but even medical schools are being subsidized by the federal government, okay? But prior to Medicare, Medicaid becoming, um, um, becoming law, that wasn't the case. Medical schools were funded by private dollars and by the money that they could get from individuals who would pay for their medical school. And then again, that's the point I make about that left it where it was a discipline that frequently only wealthy individuals could go into. Because what 22 year old has $40,000 lying around that he can pony up each year for the next four years, okay? Uh, but so scholarships, Pell Grants, um, federal aid, all have, that, those programs have all made it easier, especially for minorities, to get into these professions. And so what I hear you saying is that the bar that was way up here, God will find a way to bring it to where Absolutely. you are so that you can walk across and, that's, and be doctor and be physician as though you came from a wealthy family, as Absolutely. though you did. So it, that's where our faith comes into play as it relates to whatever it is. And most people say 
that medical school, which I tend to agree, is the highest that you can attend. There is nothing higher than that, if you ask me, as it relates to college, okay? So if God is able to bring the highest trade, the highest field down and allow it to be able to meet you where you are, what else can't you open up? What else can't you step out in faith and do if you have a doctor that is right here that is proof positive of that? Now, I do have a brief confession, okay? Because I, I tried medical school. I tried it. I tried it. I'm a licensed counselor, and I had a friend who she is actually in medical school right now. Oh, wow. she, yes, her name is, is Kim. And we had another friend who, um, her name is Miss Leetty. And so we both were like, okay, it's us three African American girls. We're gonna take on medical school. Now I will say I did do it for the wrong reason. Okay, I did it for the dividends. Okay, <laughs> and because I did it for the dividends, God said, Robotica, wait a minute, your heart is not in this. So He set it up to where I could not understand the chemistry. I could not understand the physics. And it was like Greek, and I knew that if I knew that this, I was in water that I could not handle. When we had a major test the next day and I didn't even know what to start studying to prepare for that test. I think you oh, oh my gosh, you say that. So let me ask you this, what in your personality um, equip you? Because not everybody can do that. You know, that is a certain personality, it's a certain genetic makeup. Now, you can do it if you apply yourself. I'm just gonna say, I just couldn't do it. So I don't wanna speak against anybody else because you can. It just was not for me. But what um, what part of your personality or your genetic makeup that you held on to during medical school that you um, that, that pushed you through and served as transportation to get you through? Sure, so um, I guess first that I was resilient, right? Um, I think that most people have seen troubles in their lives. Um, I think that unfortunately African Americans see, see a little bit more, or, or just more, and that's not say little, we just see more troubles in our life. Um, and my father actually was a very difficult and stern man. But he did certain things along my childhood that some people would say, oh, that was harsh. But as I grew up, it was like he was born and born. So, this is what my father would say to you. He would say that um, people don't love you, they love what you're doing for them. Now, that might be hard to stomach, but the reality is, if you're not providing a service, if you're not helping people, people don't think that they can come to you for something, they really don't want to be bothered with you. They really don't, okay? Uh, then the next thing he said was, if he can do it, why can't you? That's a funny story in and of itself. My high, my um, grammar school friend who went to college at the same time that I went, I came home with a 3.2 for my first semester GPA. Uh, uh, he came to, he came from school with a 4.0 first semester. <laughs> so 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 his name was Willie, and um, my dad um, Willie had beat me home. So we we were in the, we we were both coming back to town for college, um, and Willie had beat me by going by my house before I got to my house. <clears throat> and um, really showed my father his <laughs> scores from his first semester in college. And my scores had been sent ahead of me. So when I got home, um, my dad said, I saw your scores. Now my dad was a maintenance man, a union worker, worked at the factory, but he believed in education. And he um, said, um, you got a 3.2. Really got a four point up. If he can do it, why can't you? So the very next semester, I came home with a four point up. I told you my dad was a was a difficult man. So when I gave him the thing that said four point up, he said, "Yeah, that's about right." So <laughs> so, really? so 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 um, what what my father instilled in me was the need to work, the notion that you're supposed to excellence is supposed to be achieved. I mean you. The only, way you, the, way to, the only way you're not excellent is something hampers you, okay? Uh, but otherwise, you're supposed to be excellent. 
so I always believed that I could do what I wanted to do. Um, I always believed that if something happened that, that stalled me or pushed me off track, that I could still get back on track. And quite honestly, that's what life has taught me since medical school, that there are gonna be things that occur. Yes. There are gonna be times that you're not as good as you would like to be. Yes. But first off, do something, do what you do for the right reason. Okay. Give it your all. Don't leave any stone unturned. If you're doing anything, do it as best as you can do it. Okay. And then let it go and leave it to God. Okay. So if it goes wrong, you know you did it for the right reason. Okay. You know that your intention was good. You know that you gave it all. And therefore, the only thing that would allow something to be in disfavor for you is that God wanted to otherwise. That is absolutely amazing. Y'all, that is so much meat in that. Number one, the fact that your father was there. Okay. So, because your dad was there, that served as a foundation for you to build and have such high expectations for yourself to consider medical school which allow God to bring it down and make it reachable and make it possible for you so many people are not able to reach their full potential because their dad is not there that foundation is not there the other thing that I heard in your testimony is that your dad had pride in you he had high expectations and the reason why i it's like i was there or something but the reason why he was not satisfied with that 3.2 which is still a b yes. which is still a, a b plus so the reason why he wasn't satisfied is because his dad didn't want anybody doing better than his son and so that means that it was an insult to him that another person's son came home doing better than his son. So if we took that same pride in our children to say, wait a minute, if she has a B, you're my daughter, how dare you come in here with a C? Because I have high expectations for you to be the absolute best. So in that, in your dad setting the bar that high, you grabbed hold to that expectation because when you got ready to make a decision to pursue a career, you did not pursue a career that was at the, the low total pole. You went for the you went for the roof. So how do you think that you have in turn instilled that same high expectations into your children or to the clients that you have or bringing that with you from your dad? Sure, but let me back up one second. So there are actually two positions in my family. That's my sister Minnie, who's eight years my my senior. Excuse me, my sister Minnie, who's eight years my senior. She attended Tuskegee um, University um, on an ROTC scholarship. Okay, and she became a doctor before me. So, so, so although I might want to say that, oh yeah, I did this. I had a model. My sister was my role model throughout my childhood. Uh, she still is. Um, and um, so I did what I wanted to do, but it was with her helping me along the way. Absolutely. Well, we have part one of your medical model. And um, let me ask you this quick question. What is something that you would like to share that is happening at your facility? Whether it was a funny story or maybe even a lesson <laughs> that you got from it. Because, you know, we get all different colorful clients, you know, with different backgrounds. So is there anything that you would like to share as we close out on part one of, the med of today's medical model? Oh gosh, there are so many things that happen. It, it's truly phenomenal. Uh, this is funny, but it's not a major learning thing for me. It's just funny yes. in terms of saying how you have to um, think about what you're hearing. Yes. Uh, and what I heard was a patient told me, and this is not to discount her about her intellectual level or anything like that. She was not a stupid woman. She just heard something from the doctor and she therefore repeated it. And what she heard was that she had fireballs in her uterus. <laughs> now, now, now she didn't have fireballs in her uterus. She had fibroids in her uterus. Yes. But the doctor spoke in a way, maybe with a little bit of accent, and this just goes to understanding how much people do trust their doctors. Wow. That she heard fireballs in her uterus, 
and she left work. And she ran and with it. And she ran it. with it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Well, we have been just absolutely great, pleased, and just honored to have Dr. Michael Jones with us from the Jones Wellness and Cardiovascular Medical Center. Once again, open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. That location for walk-in is 3405 St. Claude Avenue, New Orleans, Louisiana. And you can definitely give them a call at 504-662-3763. All right. You uh, changing the clothes? No. All right. We're going to run right in. Yes. Yes. Do I need some water in the bathroom? I think we're good. So what we're going to do this time is focus on one to help. Okay. So we're going to go right into that. And let's see what we're going to start here just to make sure. They're, um, they're right next door. Oh, okay. yep. I think they're there like, they work like 24 7. Can you keep your phone rolling? <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> no, you're good. You are good. I Look, you are good because you just, I mean, you are rolling. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to put a pin note and go right there where you, you know. So you're feeding me. We're feeding off each other. So I thank you. You're making it very easy for me. So what are some procedures? Okay. Look, wasn't that good timing that we stopped right there? Mm -hmm. So we'll let that pass and we'll um, pick right back up. While we're letting them pass, I'll tell you some other funny things. I'm going to write a book eventually. I'm going to put some of this stuff. So another lady told me, now most of this comes from New Orleans, so I'm sorry <laughs> if it's it, uh, <laughs> Old Lady New Orleans. told me uh. she has smiling mighty Jesus. I can't even think about <laughs> what that is. Smiling. She, now understand, she said, she said, she said, what's going on? He was down there at the, um, at the, at the charity, and they said he had a case, bad, bad case of smiling mighty Jesus. Spinal meningitis. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> got, one, got one more for you. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Guy came. Is, it, is that right? Oh, was, it, was it a lady? I would never. Oh, no, no. A guy told me he thought he was hurting in his uterus. A guy told older, oh. older, 50-ish, 60-ish man. And he said, yeah, I think I got, I'm hurting in my uterus. I said, are you really? God dang it, I'm about to write a, I'm about to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> if you hurt me in your uterus. I'm trying to tell you. And, and this is very common among um, black men. They don't know how to say prostate. They, they take the R out from PR, pro, mm -hmm. and they say pa, and then they put the R behind the T, yeah. and it becomes Excuse me, behind the, behind the TF, oh. and now it becomes prostrate. Oh, yeah. Yes, now I that heard, I heard we that do prostrate. Right. Prostrate bother me. Right. Uh, and y'all know prostrate is when you let lie Man, down on, on, your, on, your, on your chest. That's prostrate. But he right. said he says prostrate bother. Oh. Prostrate bother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is. A, but you have you have Only just right, but you have just the right personality for them to feel like they can be themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> that is funny. That I'm not gonna ever forget that smile and mighty Jesus. Smile, smile. Oh, and the last, last one. Oh, the last goodness. one, and y'all probably oh, heard people say this, but mighty. in Georgia, we don't use this word. We don't use that colloquialism, um, and instead we say what it is. Right. Here, people have Indian pie. Y'all heard it. Don't mm -hmm. lie. You heard it. <laughs> the word is impetigo. Mm -hmm. The word is I am. P E T I G O M Petigo. That's festering lesions that get pussy on your arms and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you can understand how someone heard Petigo and they heard Indian Pie. I'm about to say, I've heard wow. Indian Pie. I never heard the other thing. Okay. Petigo. And they call it Indian Pie. But that's the real word. For that's the real Indian, word. Indian Pie. Indian Pie. Indian Indian pie. Petigo. And Petigo became Indian Pie. Yep. But y'all, they gotta stop that because then it's like we're so <laughs> off to where if you go to look it up, what's gonna come up on the Indian fire? That, it's not gonna be the that, real thing. But my grandma used to say Indian fire. That's old. Like that's that's entrenched. Seriously. It is. It is truly entrenched. It is entrenched. Like my grandma used to say that. As I know what it is. New Orleans has a culture of its own. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that we have that phone. Is it still recording? Mm -hmm. How you know you just? I, I walked over. 
See, that's my guy. See, Alvin gonna do it for you. Now, Adam gonna be like, uh uh, you a (laughs) guy? Adam gonna be saying, uh uh, we ready for the next cut, please? (laughs) Okay, so we are gonna have to give him his board, though, on this one, okay? Is there um, any place that you want us to lead up to that? That way I can make sure that we get it in. It might be on the page prior okay. to so, so, no, so when we get into talking about these things, what are some of the routines we can handle to talk about? So when we start talking about the specific um, things, there are some things that I can diagram out there um, for them. That's so when we get to this page. Got it. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, so we know where that break is going to take place. And let me just see here. We do. Okay, so um, Adam, you want us to take it from the top? Uh, sure. Okay, we're gonna go from the top and go straight in. I'm just trying to make sure that we're not leaving anything. Got it, okay, we're ready to roll. All right. Um, And you're doing good, like this is just what you do. (laughs) Yes. All right, here we go, stand by. Part two, part two, 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 two. All right, in five, four, three. Hello, everybody. I'm Ramonica Jones, and welcome to Live Bless TV, where we take great pride in mixing our faith in God with our therapeutic tools just to make sure that you are healed, whole, and made anew in every area that you hurt. Welcome to our medical model series where I am super excited and very delighted to have Dr. Michael Jones with us once again. Thank you. Absolutely for part two. So this is a very busy doctor. So you guys should feel very honored that he took time out to sit with us today so that he can pour into you to answer some of those health questions and just address some of your health needs as well. Okay, so just give yourself a hug and feel special. (laughs) Um, absolutely want to give you all some information on how you can contact Dr. Michael Jones. He does have the Jones Wellness and Cardiovascular Medical Center in New Orleans. And that address, once again, is? 3405 St. Claude Avenue. That's New Orleans, 70117. We're at the corner of St. Claude and Desire. Absolutely. And you can give him a call. That number is 504-662-3763, and that's the same as the fax line. Absolutely. He's going to give you that number one more time in case you were grabbing your pen. That's 504-662-3763. Absolutely. Their office hours is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and that website, in case you wanted to do a little research, is Jones Wellness and, all the way spelled out, cardiovascular.com. So welcome once again. We're going to um, ask you this question. What prompted you to go into the medical into the medical field? So interestingly enough, that is a faith-based decision. Um, I almost died four times as a child. So the first time, I had no idea. I was 12 months old, and I had a bad case of bronchitis, and I almost passed. My family physician, Dr. Harry Sims, saved my life. Um, then again, when I was about eight years old, I almost drowned swimming. My mother dived in the pool, pulled me out. Then next, I was nine, and I was swimming again, and I got caught up in the current. I was so narrow. See, I'm little now, but I was so narrow back then that the tide kept sweeping me out. 